Today I'm gonna to share with you six video editing techniques for beginners that totally saved my life when I first started making videos. Let's take a look. When I first started making videos, I had no idea what I was doing. No surprise there, but small confession, I also didn't really take the time to learn what I was supposed to be doing, and as a result of that, there was a lot of wasted time. I was doing things incorrectly, I was doing things in a way that was much more complicated than it needed to be. It was just a lot of wasted time, a lot of bad videos, and a lot of frustration. And so today, I thought I'd try and save you some of that frustration by sharing with you six things that I wish I knew when I first started making videos. Now, if we get to the end of this list and you've got a tip of your own, something that really helped you when you first started out, make sure you let me know in the comments. I might make a video out of it. And speaking of that, big shout out to Nick Nimmin for giving me the idea for this video. Thanks a lot, man. All right, let's get started. My first tip is to use markers. Most video editing software out there allows you to set markers and add them to your timeline, to your video clips, to your audio clips, and stuff like that. And those markers can be used for a few different things. One of the more popular ways to use them is to set points in your timeline where you're gonna be making cuts in your footage, which is super, super, helpful if you're cutting a b-roll sequence to the beat of the music but as far as i'm concerned one of the more practical ways to use it one of my more favorite ways to use it is to use those markers to add notes to your project so let's say that i'm editing a big project and i'm going through the main timeline and i come across a section and i'm like you know what some b-roll of the beach would go really really well here so i press m on my keyboard and i set a marker and i add a note to that marker that says b-roll of a beach and that way when i'm going through my second pass and i'm adding all my b-roll in i see that marker and i'm like oh yeah i need a i need a scene from the beach so i go and i grab that footage and i throw it into the timeline and i'm done so using markers to add notes will help you stay organized and it'll keep everything in one place you don't have to write down your notes externally and then worry about losing them. And if you haven't done that, well, you're either lying or you haven't been editing videos for very long. My next tip is to organize your audio tracks. And this is something that I've mentioned before in other videos and in live streams. And I know as new video creators, Audio is kind of secondary in our brains, but when it comes down to it, really audio is one of, if not the most important part of any video. So you really want to keep that organized. You really want to be able to kind of optimize your project so that you can go through and edit your audio in a way that's quick, easy, and makes it sound good. And so what I do is I have you know, tracks for dialogue, and those are the dialogue tracks, and only dialogue goes in there, and then I have tracks for sound effects, tracks for ambient noise, tracks for music, and whatever. You organize it the way that your brain works, that's how my brain works, so when you do that, and you go to edit, everything's in its place, you don't have to worry about searching for things, and you can even, if your video editing software allows you to edit at the track level, you can edit an entire track and not worry about screwing up some sound effect down the line because you're only dealing with dialogue, or you don't have to worry about messing with the music because you're only dealing with sound effects. You get the idea. And it doesn't take long to do either. You just add the tracks that you need, you label them, and then when you're going through and making your cuts and adding your footage to the timeline, you just put the right type of clip in the right track and you're good to go. This is gonna make your workflow faster and it's probably gonna lead to better sounding videos as well. My next tip is to use keyboard shortcuts. And this is something that I really, 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 really wish I knew when I first started out because I didn't know what keyboard shortcuts were. So I was just, I was using my mouse for everything and I would go through and I would click a button and I would go do what I need to do and then click another button and do what I need to do and then click and it was just a mess. And then I started learning about keyboard shortcuts and I started learning about, you know, hitting C for cut or B for blade if you're in DaVinci Resolve and control B if you just want to you know, cut at the playhead and all of those things, ripple delete and adding things to timelines and all these things that instead of doing with my mouse, I can just hit a couple keys on my keyboard and be done with it. I mean, no joke, when I started using keyboard shortcuts and I started memorizing the ones that I use most often, my editing time got cut in half. So if you don't know what the keyboard shortcuts are for your video editing software, learn them, love them, and thank me later. Moving on, my next step is to use 
proxies. Well, Premiere Pro calls them proxies. DaVinci Resolve calls them optimized media. Either way, it's the same thing. You're creating lower resolution, lighter versions of your footage that you can do all your edits on. And that way your playback is a lot smoother. It's a lot lighter. You're not bogging down your computer. It's just, it's so much better than trying to work with like 4K, 60 frame per second compressed footage. It's just, it, it's just better. And a quick bonus tip, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of creating proxies or creating optimized media, even though it's really not that difficult, you can go to your playback monitor, at least in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and you can lower the resolution of your playback and that might help you get some lighter playback as well. But still, if you do that, when you start adding on effects and, and color grades and stuff like that, you might be bogging down again. So your better bet is to just go ahead and create the proxy files, create the optimized media and just learn to love it. It's great. My next tip is to use multiple timelines or multiple sequences if you're in Premiere Pro. And this is something that I do on larger projects. If there's many different scenes, what I'll do is I'll create a timeline for each one of those scenes and I'll fully edit those timelines and then I will bring those timelines into kind of a, a main master timeline and stitch it all together. And this doesn't necessarily save time except for the fact that you're gonna be a lot more organized, you're gonna be a lot less likely to get lost in your own edit and you're gonna be a lot less likely that you're gonna get overwhelmed by those bigger projects. So create multiple timelines, create one timeline for each scene and that way you can break it down into smaller more digestible chunks of video that you can work with. And it, it's just, it'll it'll help. It'll, it's more of a mental thing than anything, but it will really, really help. My next tip is to color grade using scopes. And that's because your eyes will lie to you. Your $6,000 color correct monitor will lie to you. But the one thing that will not lie to you when it comes to color are the scopes. So learn how to read those. And if you, if you don't know how to read them, I actually created a video about that. You can check that out right here. And if you found this useful and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.